As the sun drops and the sky darkens, you find yourself contemplating which research design to use. Although there are varied forms of research designs in a qualitative study, you might want to consider the one that we are going to be tackling today, as it might be the right fit for your topic of interest. During your high school years, I'm sure you got fed up with all the discussion reiterating the definition and purpose of a theory. Our teachers may define it as a collection of propositions to illustrate the principles of a subject with the purpose of attempting to explain natural phenomena and make future predictions. There is also Jess Feist and Gregory Feist who defined the theory as a set of related assumptions that allow scientists to use logical deductive reasoning to formulate testable hypotheses. That being said, I bet you have questions popping in your head right now as you watch this, asking on how to formulate a theory. What type of research should I use to generate a theory? So much to say, granted theory takes place when you discover a new theory to underlie your study at the time of data collection and analysis. It emphasizes the generation of the theory through your participants who underwent your research process. Basically, through your observation on your subjects, you will happen to find a theory that applies to your current study. Developing the theory will help you explain certain acts of participants manifested in your study and it also provides a framework for future research. Always remember students, in this type of research design, theory is not found at the beginning of the study but rather developed during the process of data collection and analysis. This means that it is grounded in a theory that is shaped only by your participants view, not by the researchers. All right, now that you know what it means, don't you get a little curious as to how did it start and where did it come from? Well, in the late 1960s, sociologists Barney Glazer and Ansem Strauss recorded and published their methods of research during their study on examining the experience of terminally ill patients at the University of California San Francisco Medical Center. Throughout this collaboration, Glazer and Strauss questioned the appropriateness of using a scientific method of verification for the study. In response to people who were interested in the research, in 1967 they developed a pioneering book, The Discovery of Granite Theory, that expounded in detail on the granite theory procedures. This seminal work explained how theory could be generated from data inductively. This process challenged the traditional method of testing or redefining theory through deductive testing. Granite theory provided an outlook that questioned the view of the time that quantitative methodology is the only valid, unbiased way to determine truths about the world. Glazer and Strauss challenged the belief that qualitative research lacked rigor and detail that the method of comparative analysis enables the generation of a theory. In the later years, granite theory was eventually developed and its various versions. So, what makes granite theory unique from other types of qualitative research methods? Well, here are some features we can observe from this method. For one, it is inductive, meaning that it builds up into something. Rather than writing a research to prove the reliability of an established theory, this method starts off with collecting data first to build up a new theory. To organize the data in constructing a granite theory, another of its unique feature is that the researchers create new categories and new analytical codes based solely on the data collected and not on pre-existing concepts, which will then be incorporated into the theoretical framework. Data collection, coding, and analysis also happen at the same time. 
as the new theory starts to develop as a result of coding and categorizing the data. The researchers use theoretical sampling until they reach theoretical saturation. When creating a granite theory, researchers will want to learn and expand as much as possible regarding the categories made. This type of sampling is useful for that to happen as researchers gather and analyze data and then decide on what data to collect next depending on the emerging categories and the theory being created in the study. The recruitment of participants should be diverse and flexible as the theory builds up. Theoretical saturation refers to when the researchers have determined that there is enough data collected because adding additional data doesn't contribute any more properties to the categories. This study also needs quite a lot of work and time because after the researchers have synthesized and categorized the data to come up with a theory, the last step of granite theory uses discriminant sampling, wherein the researchers will once again test the theory on a new sample group that's similar to the original group. The purpose of this is to see if the experiences of the new participants is similar to the theory created by the researchers. In conclusion, you'll know it's a granite theory when it is inductive, when it collects, analyzes, and classifies data into categories, when it uses theoretical sampling until theoretical saturation is reached, and when it uses discriminant sampling as its last step to test if the theory is accurate. We've already tackled granite theory's definition, origin, and features. Moving on to its types, there are two types of granite theory, the systematic approach and the constructivist approach. But first, what is systematic approach? This approach focuses heavily on inductive thinking. In many ways, the researcher starts with the most specific information. They collect it, summarize it, and analyze it using categories, procedure, codes, and coding. Just like the three coding processes, such as open coding, axial coding, and selective coding. Firstly, open coding is a process by which raw data is first analyzed and categorized. Secondly, axial coding constructs linkages between data. Thirdly, selective coding is the final stage of data analysis. It is the process of choosing one category to be a core category. While the systematic involves codes, the constructivist, on the other hand, emphasizes views, values, and feelings of the people rather than the process. As we've come to know what granite theory really is, along with its origin, distinctive features, and different types, I bet you're already thinking of starting your paper, but let's first talk about procedures. We can't really miss this important detail, right? So let's get started. Number one, determine. By now we know that granite theory is a good design to use when a theory is not available to explain or understand a process. Sounds like a lot less hassle, right? Theories are needed to explain a certain phenomenon and granite theory will provide just that framework. However, theories may be incomplete because they do not address potentially valuable variables. We should determine if granite theory is indeed the best option to study a research problem. Number two is about focusing. Make sure to focus the interview questions on understanding how individuals experience the process and then identify the steps in the process. Number three focuses on theory building. Theory building emerges through the simultaneous and iterative data collection, analysis, and memoing process. In memoing, you can write down ideas about the evolving theory through the data procedures, which may lead to discovery of patterns as the research progresses. Number four is to structure the various analysis procedures 
as open, axial, and selective coding and follow traditions. Let's talk more about the open coding. The researcher forms categories of information about the phenomenon by segmenting it and within each category, the researchers find several properties. Then they look for data to dimensionalize or show an extreme possibilities on a continuum of the said property. After open coding, the researchers will then assemble the data in a new way. They will present a coding paradigm or logic paradigm like visual models. But remember that when focusing on a particular theory component, the explanation should remain at a conceptual level and use selected data fragments to provide supporting evidence. Another type of coding that has been mentioned on number four is called selective coding, wherein the researcher may write a storyline that connects the categories, articulate a substantive level theory for communication purposes. This will be written by the researcher that is close to a specific problem or population of people because, as the name suggests, it is empirical. At this point, the study may end with a generation of a theory, but if it needs to be presented, let's go to the last number, which is the presentation of the theory as a discussion or model. How a grounded theory is presented depends on the audience and the process being explained. One of the ways is general reporting structure. You can conclude it with a discussion of the theory and connections, contradiction, significance of findings and implications, as well as limitations. And we're done with the procedures. But before we wrap this part up, remember what Chavez advised. These are only guidelines that provide you a path through the research process. A granite theory study challenges researchers for the following reasons. The researcher needs to set aside as much as possible theoretical ideas or notions so that the analytic substantive theory can emerge. Despite the evolving inductive nature of this form of qualitative inquiry, the researcher must recognize that this is a systematic approach to research with specific steps in data analysis. The researcher faces the difficulty of determining when categories are saturated or when the theory is sufficiently detailed. One strategy that might be used to move towards saturation is to use discriminant sampling in which the researcher gathers additional information from individuals, different from those people initially interviewed, to determine if the theory holds true for these additional participants. The researcher needs to recognize that the primary outcome of the study is a theory with specific components, a central phenomenon, causal conditions, strategies, conditions and context, and consequences. Now that we've discussed everything that we have to know about this research design, how about we end it with a sample research that would help us understand how this granite theory works in a certain study. There is a study conducted by William Feeler from University of Nebraska-Lincoln. The research study is titled Being There, a granite theory study of students' perceptions of instructor presence in online classes. The purpose of the study is to investigate the insights of experienced individual online students at a community college in Texas in order to conjure an objective theory of community college student discernment to the presence of their online instructor. Meanwhile, the focus of the study is the theory of substantiating and conserving instructor presence to empower student learning. This pressing theory articulates that the perception of instructor presence precipitates from the student-instructor relationship, that it is established and sustained through four phases of instructor activity and student response. The conditional phase, the welcoming activities phase, the instructor's commitment to the previous phase, and the instructor's transition from strong to lesser presence in nurturing. 
Subsequent to the focus of the study is the method used in collecting data. The study used an active interviewing succeeded with Straussian granite theory. The researcher of the study collected data through an interview with 16 online students who took at least four online courses at a community college. Initially, the method used in data analysis is memo writing. Memo writing is an important facet of open coding, which according to LaRosse's study, memo writing is the key to evolving new notions in asking about and questions that would drive the researcher to think more abstractly and theoretically. The researcher analyzes the data into minute units or indicators. The study also used a comparative analysis, which includes systematic comparison of units of study indicators to each other.